All right, everybody. Um, Grady Polson here, Family First Life America. Beyond excited to have Jamie Cheerio in the house today. He is an executive vice president, a Hall of Fame producer. Uh, how many families did you protect last year? Uh, 436. 436 families protected last year. Um, how many families did you protect this week? 30. 30 families protected this week. Any annuity clients? Zero. Zero annuity clients. So Jamie Cheerio is a tremendous producer, um, leading a, a fierce and ferocious team who also wants success. And it's exciting to have him down here in our Arizona office for the day. Uh, dig in. We're working with some new agents. We've got a bunch of uh, recruiting calls. And on top of that, uh, we get the pleasure of learning from one of the masters of the art of helping clients understand that life insurance is life is better with life insurance than than without. And um, uh, beyond excited for this, but without further ado, Jamie, I'd love if you would just kind of share a little about your background, your story. You know, a lot of people as we continue to grow this agency, um, you know, can, maybe can relate to your background and what you've gone through and where you are. So sure, yeah, I'm 28 years old right now and live in Oregon with my wife and six month old baby and been a entrepreneur for about a decade now and it wasn't until family first life that i really found my home you know we say best business ever this truly is so um, my background is in network marketing and digital marketing i spent probably about eight years in the network marketing space um, you know trying to lead teams towards you know an opportunity that i thought that my grandkids were going to be coming to the conventions and um, eventually those opportunities weren't there um, just kind of jumped from opportunity to opportunity for years trying to make it and eventually kind of gave up on my entrepreneur dreams, uh, became a solid employee. I owned my own digital marketing business. Even though I was the owner, I was the employee of the month because we did probably about three quarters of a million dollars a year in revenue, but I was paying myself $2,000 a month to work 80 hours a week after, you know, four business partners and two employees. So I pretty much owned a job Yeah, and then, uh, found insurance and it changed my entire life. Uh, got into this business part-time. My wife had just gotten laid off from her job as a teacher. We didn't know what was going to happen with the pandemic. My only goal was just to replace her income and get us some health insurance and got into the field. And I was able to protect a couple families in my first weekend and it pretty much replaced her income overnight. And the light bulb kind of went off for me and I said, okay, I can do this. And um, I just really enjoyed getting out there meeting families and it's just been the rest is history. Yeah. It's a, um, it's, it's pretty fulfilling right to mm -hmm. to know that you're going out there and you're putting something in place that is going to help them right it's it's a it's a it's it's certified to help and that's um one of the best parts about this been so perfect you know thank you for sharing so much now so let's transition um you have uh you run a, a, a ton of mortgage protection appointments and you also run a ton of instant internet lead appointments and i think that the the ability to to buy interest, right? That's the value of leads. That's why I think Family First Life is in a position in a, uh, a marketplace with the super high compensation rates. And at the same standpoint, the ability to get agent leads, I apologize, uh, life insurance leads puts us in a very powerful position to be able to put our, grow our business and grow our own household uh, in tandem. So, but you have been a, a pioneer, if you will, or, or a, a positive pioneer of instant internet life leads. And I know you've got a great script. I know you've got a, you know, passion around dialing. I'd love if you kind of share with us your, the way you book leads, uh, instant internet leads and, and your ideas around that. Yeah. I mean, I'd love to share a script before I get into script, really. Um, I want to talk about the value of live dials. So when I first started, I was dialing alone in my office and it's a lonely lonely thing to dial by yourself and nobody's around when somebody says i didn't fill that out and you put your tail between your legs and say okay mary have a good day and there's so many times that i stopped dialing early there's so many times that i had so much more in the tank that i did not um really you know give it a full shot there's so many times i became unfocused when i was dialing by myself uh, live dials changed everything for me what live dials is for anybody who's just tuning in it's where we all jump in on zoom and we have rooms of people who are booking their appointments live and we have rooms of people who are doing telesales and actually call to close with all of their um, appointments and i think the value of live dials there's a couple of different types of people who jump on live dials there's a person who jumps on and they just jump on to listen they jump on to learn the only reason you should ever be that person who's just listening and learning is if you're not yet licensed, not yet contracted, or you're on the West Coast and you're working out listening to the people on the East Coast dialing. That's the only reason you should ever be on there just listening. Then you have the people who jump on and they have their cameras off and they dial. The thing about somebody with their cameras off, I don't really care if I see you or not, but for me, a camera on is an accountability thing. If the camera's on, I'm working. 
I know that when the camera's off, every single time that I'm eating lunch, the camera goes off. Every time, you know, I could be sitting there watching Netflix on my phone over here, eating a bowl of Cheerios and, you know, not working, my camera's off, no one would know. But for whatever reason, when the camera's on, I'm typically working, I'm dialing. So if I could just challenge somebody, number one, if you're just on there, just turn your camera on and I promise your production will go up just from having your camera on. Then you have the person who refuses to unmute. The person who refuses to unmute will never get better because they refuse to receive feedback. And it's it's a scary thing. I remember I was a huge proponent of being on live dials because I hated dialing alone from my farmhouse in Oregon. But then <laughs> one time Grady called me and said, unmute. And I was like, but dude, I'm not that good. And he's like, I know. That's why you need to unmute. So I can give you some feedback and so that some of the top producers on here can give you some feedback. And it was one of the most powerful things that ever happened for me because – when I allowed myself to receive feedback, it was, hey, Jamie, you're pausing right there. Don't pause. Hey, Jamie, if you just change your tonality or your pace right there, you're going to book more appointments. Hey, they're hanging up right here because you're giving them this specific, um, you know, clo- or open-ended answer versus, you know, giving them two options. And it was getting that feedback and making those tweaks quickly that helped me become a better producer. The other thing that happened was, for whatever reason, when my phone was unmuted or my line on Zoom was unmuted, I feel like I tried harder. And it's weird because it's like you kind of swing for the fences when people are watching. But when nobody's watching, you put your tail between your legs when someone says, you know, I'm not interested or I didn't fill that out. But when I'm unmuted in front of 100 people or 20 people, however many people are on, I typically want to try to book the appointment because I want to show everybody else that I'm following the system. So by being unmuted, I tried harder. I stopped putting my tail between my legs and I started swinging for the fences. And it's either I was booking the appointment or they're going to hang up on me. And by doing that thousands and thousands of times, I got good on the phones. So live dials is everything. There you go. Well, what do you say? I mean, I agree. Like I, I, everything you, I, but I, now I want to know what you're saying. Like, what Perfect. do you, what do you say? So let, let's do a quick, just straight run through of phone okay. script. And then we can talk about kind of my philosophy behind internet leads. I think that's really important. Love it. So we're going to call an internet lead right now. So ring, ring. Hello. Grady. Yes. Hey, Grady, this is Jamie getting back with you in regards to that inquiry you sent into my office about the life insurance uh, here in Lynn County. I'm just the medical underwriter who's been assigned to get that informational packet out there to you. I just need to confirm the delivery address. 123 Main Street here in Albany. Is that correct? Yeah. What was this again? Okay. This is in regards to that inquiry you sent into my office about the life insurance. Most people typically fill this out because they want to make sure if they pass away, they can leave some money behind to their family, take care of burial cremation. I'm assuming that's what you were looking for. I, th- I think so, yeah. Okay, perfect. So I got your date of birth here, 8 1953 is that correct? Mm-hmm. Okay, perfect. So I'll have you off the phone here in 30 seconds. Like I said, most people typically fill this out because they want to leave some money behind for their family, take care of their final expenses. Um, we'll go ahead and get that information out there to you. Um, so they're going to have me dispatched out there here over the next couple of days. The way that this works is it's all non-medical, meaning there's no blood, no urine, no needles, no doctor's appointments, anything like that. Um, they are going to have me dispatched out there for the next two days. It looks like Friday and Saturday, I'll be seeing about 25 families. I don't have a lot of time, maybe about five or 10 minutes to get this out to you. Uh, are you working or retired? I'm retired. You're retired. Okay. And are you more of an early riser? Or you like to sleep in early. Okay. Any doctor's appointments or anything going on tomorrow? Yep. Okay, perfect. What time's the doctor's appointment? 10.30. 10.30, okay. And how far are you from the doctor's office? Mm, 25 minutes. 25 minutes, okay. So you'll probably be out of there by like 12.30. Um, so I don't have anything like really close to your doctor's appointment, but I do have a uh, 115 or a 145. Which one would you want? Probably 115. 115, okay, perfect. I got you down here for 115. Go ahead and do me a favor. Can you grab a pen and a paper? I just need to give you my state license number so you can verify I'm not some crazy person. But do you have to come to the house? Yeah, so, uh, sorry, my mouth's a little dry. Um, Yeah, so what they do is they have me dispatched out there to come out there and verify that you are who you say you are. There's no insurance fraud being committed, and they also want me to make sure that you're not like 600 pounds or strapped down to a hospital bed. That's not you, is it? No, 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 no. Okay, perfect. So they're going to have me dispatched out there, like I said, 115 tomorrow. I'll be driving a silver car. I've got brown hair and a brown beard. I'll be wearing a name tag around my neck with my state license on it. So do me a favor, grab that pen and paper real quick. Okay. All right, first I'll have you write down my name, which is Jamie, J-A-M-I-E. Okay. Next is uh, our appointment time, which is one fifteen tomorrow, Friday the 20th. And then okay. my state license number, one nine five zero six eight five four. Can you go ahead and repeat that back for me? Okay, perfect. I got you down here for one fifteen, And real quick, just in case I'm having any trouble finding it, GPS, does it bring me right there? Oh, yeah, it should be fine. Okay, and is that a house or an apartment? Uh, it's a condo. Oh, it's a condo. Okay. Is there like a gate code? Do I jump over the gate or anything? Yeah, there's a gate code. Okay. What's the gate code? Pound one, two, three, four. 
Island 1234. Okay, gotcha. All right, I'll be out there. It looks like 115. Go ahead and uh, write that down, add it to your calendar. I look forward to meeting you and helping you. Good. Okay. Thanks for bearing with me there. I had oh, you're a dry great. mouth on one of these in a while. You're great. That was um, controlled. You, you know, you weren't you weren't excited. No, I'm never excited. So my previous business, you weren't exciting at all. You were just like yeah. so dry. But like I was like I was captivated because your strength through the whole thing. So my previous business, I was calling um, business owners and trying to cold pitch them on my digital marketing services. And typically, when I call a business, you know who you're not talking to. The business owner, you're getting Mary at the front desk. So when I get Mary at the front desk, hey, Mary, how you doing today? You're like, it's just, it's totally different versus that's not who I'm talking to now. I'm talking to somebody who requested the information. So for me, um, monotone, uninterested, and I'm more busy than you. Got it. That's good, man. That was very good. Thank you very much. Anything else you want to add on dialing and, and yeah, I really script? want to dig into internet leads for a second because okay. a lot of people, they have trouble dialing internet leads. And I think it's important just to know the philosophy behind who actually filled out the lead card. So we have a various, you know, a variety of different lead types here. We've got, um, instant internet leads, new internet life leads, Facebook, final expense, direct mail, final expense, direct mail, mortgage protection. They're, they're all great. They all work. If you have someone with a direct mail lead, um, Typically, that's someone with a little bit higher intent, someone who actually filled out a postcard, sent it back in the mail. I know that I would never fill out a postcard and send it back in the mail. So if somebody actually takes the time to mail something into an office, they're very, very high intent. Somebody on Facebook, they're scrolling. They happen to be targeted for a specific demographic. They are attracted to the ad. They click on it. They fill it out. They keep scrolling. They're done. Typically, they're not being retargeted by anybody. They're done. You're probably the only person calling them. An internet lead, on the other hand, an internet lead, the behavior is, in order for that lead to be generated, they most likely had to go on Google and search life insurance quotes, life insurance okay. agent near me. And the person who has that behavior that's looking for life insurance actively versus somebody who was hit with an ad, they saw a billboard, they pulled off the road and went to the McDonald's, it's different than the person who's actively looking for it. They probably wanted to get some comparisons. They probably wanted to get multiple quotes. So what did they do? They went and they filled out the form that Family First Life put out there. That lead specifically goes into our CRM, and we are the only person who will ever get that lead. But we cannot control the behavior of the person who goes and they fill out four more forms trying to get quotes. And if you've ever tried to get health insurance, if you've ever tried to get a mortgage, if you've ever tried to talk to any sort of broker for anything, your phone's going to get blown up. So mm -hmm. they fill out our lead form. It only goes to us, but then they go to the next lead form down and they fill out the one that sends it out to 365 call centers across the country. Now their phone's blowing up. So you have to understand that it's a very competitive lead, but you hear in boot camp all the time, increase credibility, reduce sales pressure, increase credibility, reduce sales pressure. How can I be the anti sales person when I talk to this person? And they're hearing all these telemarketers. So the number one objection that I can give you guys on how to overcome with a, you know, a PO'd internet lead. These are probably my favorite clients. My biggest premiums are the people who answer the phone really mad. Okay. Nice. So they answer the phone. I didn't fill it out. I don't want it. It doesn't really matter what they say. So Grady, are you not interested because you're actually not interested or because you're just really mad you're receiving so many phone calls? And what that does is it creates this weird pattern interrupt where they're like, huh? Like normally the people that call me, are just trying to sell me and they're just hard pushing, hard pushing. It's like, Hey, are you not interested because you're actually not interested or because you're just receiving so many phone calls? And they go, yeah, cause I'm receiving so many phone calls. Perfect. That's exactly why I'm calling. I'm the manager calling to apologize. You've been receiving so many phone calls. My job's just to get that information out there to you. Like you originally requested before you started getting blown up with the phone calls. And that's what you were looking for, right? Yeah. That's what I was looking for. All right. Then I go back into the script and it does this weird thing. It just like humanizes for a second. I hear them. I hear you've been getting blown up with phone calls. I apologize. I booked the appointment. I get out there and they're like, well, how do I get the phone calls to stop? I'm like, stop filling out forms. <laughs> yeah. That's great, man. That's actually that's spectacular. Um, it's such a, uh, it, it takes the complex and what looks like almost an insurmountable objection. And as you said, humanizes it. it I, I, I hear you. I'm empathizing. I understand you're frustrated. I want you to be not frustrated anymore and have answers to these questions and not get phone calls. So 1015 or 1045 tomorrow morning, which works better for you. Right. So fantastic, Jamie. And it's just a great perspective on that because it is people who are looking for quotes. It is people who are searchers and searchers want options. And you're the broker. You're the bro. You're the option mm -hmm. guy and gal. I think you need to understand like there's the cliche quote. Everybody loves to buy, but they hate to be sold. 
you have to be the anti telemarketer. You have to be the anti salesperson when you're talking to some of these people who are mad on the phone. Some people will just straight up be like, "Yeah, I was waiting for your call. Come on over." Like that that does happen every now and then. But there is, uh, you know, a bunch of people who are not happy that you're calling, but they still want the information. I think that's so important to know. So when I am calling them, I have that in my mind that this person might not be super happy to hear me. And, you know, you go through the first three lines of your script. If they don't let me get through the first three lines of the script where I'm now confirming a piece of information, I'll call them back 27 times in a row. I don't care. So, you know, Grady, this is Jamie getting back to you about that life insurance inquiry you sent into my office. You know, here in Lynn County, I'm the medical underwriter who's been assigned to get that informational packet out there to you. I got the delivery address, 123 Main Street. Is that correct? If they cut me off at any point, they say I'm not interested, they hang up, I will call them back literally 30 times in a row until they answer and they'll be like, what the F do you want? And it's like, Grady, I'm not the salesperson or the telemarketer. And then just like, it, once again, pattern interrupt. I, all I have to do is keep them on the phone and allow me to get through those first couple sentences confirming the info. And the most important thing when it comes to dialing is learning how to ask questions. You end every single sentence, every single time you overcome an objection with a question. If they're asking you questions, they're talking, they're in control. You're asking them questions, they answer, you're in control. Anytime that somebody throws you off your script, whether it's in the beginning, the middle, or the end, I kind of like to look at my script like a straight line. Okay, so I start out at the beginning starting point, and my goal is to book the appointment the final starting point. People are going to try to throw me off my script every which way. Anytime that somebody throws me off my script, quickly overcome the objection ask a question, loop back to the script. So, you know, I overcome the objection and I've got your date of birth, 81593. Is that correct? Yes. Back to the next part of the script. Ask a question, you retake control. You got the chops, bro. You got it. That was, that was, I mean, you, you're, uh, let's back up. How did you get there? How many times did you dialed the phone? So I've probably sat on close to 1500 appointments. Okay. So if I've sat on 1500 appointments, that means that I've also been no-showed a fair amount of times. Um, you probably so, booked 3,000. Which means I probably booked 3,000, which means I have dialed the phone tens and tens and tens of thousands of times. My, my dial tracker stack is probably this thick, just a dial tracker since I first started in the last 18 months. And so for the user who just heard that, the question is not to ask, ask uh, don't ask me if it's hard, ask me if it's worth it. And if you want change, this is the action you need to take. Now, do you need to go to the level and do you need to hit Hall of Fame? That's for you to decide. But to get to any level of success in anything you want to do, whether you continue with us at FFL or whether you venture off into some new adventure, I wish you well. It will take grit, effort, time, and a mastery of skill to give you whatever it is that you want. If it's financial freedom, if it's a uh, master of self personal discipline, if it is becoming a, a great example to those that are looking to you for guidance, trust, and, and faith in the world. It's going to take discipline to master that. Jamie? You've got the phones down. So this that, is the, the best skill that you could ever learn is the phones. That's it. The in-home you can learn from repetition and we're going to give you guys some word tracks in the home, but you could just go set a hundred appointments and kind of figure it out. But if you don't discipline yourself on the phones, you're never going to get to that point where you sit with a hundred families and figure it out. Yeah. Yeah. That was great. Any, um, any favorite trainers you have, uh, phones, phone trainers that, you know, people are watching this now. We'll get this on, we'll get this up, uh, within a couple of days. But what are there any other people that you've looked at uh, that they can go Google or search on YouTube to reference for phone dialing training? Paul McLean, Matt Smith. Paul McLean, mine, mine as well. Paul McLean, Matt Smith. Go to sleep with one, wake up with the other. Chantel's like, why are you always with these men? I'm like, I love these men. <laughs> so yes, Matt Smith and Paul McLean, fantastic. Um, but uh, you know, if there if there were three points, you would give them control, control, control. What were the three? I mean, control, 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 um, control, control, monotone, and more control. Control, monotone, more control. That's literally, I coach my uh, son in soccer. And I'm like, listen, if we control the ball, we win. Now, what do we, what do we need to win? The ball. No, control. And like, you're going back and forth trying to teach these little kids, like, don't kick the, I understand you can kick hard. When you kick it hard out of bounds, we lose the ball. Lose control, we don't win. So, there we go. All right. Thank you, Jamie.